Glenn A. Larson was the most successful producer and creator on TV throughout the 1970s and the 1980s. Some of his shows were short-lived, and some were long-running and successful, like Magnum P.I. and the fantasy action series Knight Rider. Auto Man was a series that could have been successful, but sadly it was short-lived. After seeing the 1982 Disney movie Tron, Larson became inspired to create the series Auto Man. He didn't want to copy Tron, but wanted to use the digital style effects that were used in the film, which at this time was considered groundbreaking. Although Auto Man had similar effects, they were somewhat different to the effects of Tron. Larson would even hire two of the producers, Donald Kushner and Peter Locke, who both worked on Tron. Auto Man began with two guys walking into my office and uh, they had worked on a motion picture called Tron and they were into the world of uh, graphics and uh, something I hadn't been too involved in. And while I hadn't been a big fan of Tron uh, in terms of its accessibility to maybe a mass audience, I thought there was a, that kind of technology would apply to, a, uh, to the show we eventually came up with. At this time, due to the special effects, Auto Man was the most expensive television show ever produced on TV at this time, with every episode of Auto Man costing over a million dollars to make. Larson wanted to go as far away as possible from the main plot of Tron, which was about a human entering a digital world, where Auto Man had a computer program entering the real world. The main premise of the show is about Walter, who is a police officer and an IT computer expert, who creates an AI named Automatic Man, a hologram whose body has geometrical patterns on him that glows neon blue, is brought into the real world and becomes a crime fighter who has superhero-like abilities at night, along with his sidekick, Cursor, who can be turned into any digital contraption that Walter dreams up, like a plane or a helicopter. But the main appearance he takes is of a sports car in the form of a Lamborghini. The car would turn on a 90 degree angle, which would often show the passengers in the car being thrown around inside, which would make for some funny comedic moments. This effect was similar to the effect in Tron when the cycles would make sharp turns. With Automan's excessive use of electricity in the nighttime, it would mean that he would suffer from a power shortage during the daytime. Cursor only made R2-D2 style bleep and whistle sounds, and Walter would always understand what it was saying. To avoid suspicion, Auto Man disguises himself as a human named Otto Man, who collaborates with Walter in each episode. A prominent feature of Auto Man was his ability to wrap himself around Walter to protect him, appearing as one person, with Walter inside Auto Man he would end up speaking in two voices. Uh, Walter could jump into the hologram and become the hologram. You wouldn't see Walter anymore. His body would be invisible, but you would hear him. So you'd hear his voice, which was also very funny. The producers of the show cast Desi Arnaz Jr., who starred alongside his mother, Lucille Ball, in Here's Lucy, plays Walter Nebica. For the part of Auto Man, they chose Chuck Wagner, a soap star who starred on General Hospital and had made various appearances on TV on shows like The Dukes of Hazard and Dynasty. Wagner would base the character of Auto Man on William Shatner. Walter's close associate, Roxanne Caldwell, was played by Heather McNair, who appeared in many shows throughout the 80s, including Saint Elsewhere, Knight Rider and Airwolf. The show also starred Robert Lansing, as Lieutenant Jack Curtis. Lansing is known to Star Trek fans for starring as Gary Seven in the original series episode, Assignment Earth. He also starred in the science fiction movie, 4D Man, in 1959. Gerald O'Loughlin played Captain Boyd, who saw no use for computers in the police department. Captain Boyd would always pronounce Walter's last name incorrectly. The suit that Chuck Wagner wears is a reflective fabric. The fabric had tin reflective balls on it, and each take was photographed by projecting the beam over the actor. This particular technique they used 
was used as the Kryptonian costumes in Superman the movie. Despite Auto Man being a computer hologram come to life, no computer animation was used to create the effects. Instead, traditional styles of animation and editing techniques were used. But the idea of all that vector graphic rendering was uh, to create the illusion of, of computer generation, but it was all done old style, hand animation style. So that's one of the reasons we were a CGI series before there was CGI. So that's one of the reasons we were so expensive. The autoplane was actually a miniature model. The series only lasted just under a season. From December the 15th of 1983 to April the 2nd of 1984 for just 12 episodes. One of the main reasons the show was cancelled was because it cost so much to make an episode. Over a million dollars in fact. And the show never really got enough viewers, which didn't justify the show's extravagant budget. So the network, ABC, pulled the plug on the series. There was actually a 13th episode made, but that was never aired. Auto Man was a big disappointment for Larson, whose show Manimal was a complete failure that very same year. This would be a big blow to Larson's career, and he would go on to produce a string of forgotten and short-lived shows throughout the mid to late 80s and early 90s. As far as merchandising went, they released an action figure, toy auto car, a Commodore 64 video game, and a novelization of the pilot episode. Chuck Wagner reprised his role of Auto Man in the movie Helogram in 2017, after the director wrote to him, telling him how much he enjoyed the show as a kid. Auto Man, though short-lived, was a very engaging and fun series to watch, especially as a child. I vaguely remember seeing the show premiere on Australian TV. I enjoyed the show and loved the cool holographic effects and the awesome car, which would turn corners very quickly. It's these kind of forgotten TV classics that personally have a special place in my heart. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like what you see on my channel, please subscribe. And if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, click on the link below.